Hey, Scruffy. How you doing? Wow. Speaking meows are a little bit louder. They've actually been kind of quiet the past month or two. I think in winter your meows are much, much louder. I think Scruffy's meows get louder when he gets more agitated. Usually by the weather. Like storms. So Scruffy's still stepping all the way back. I don't think Scruffy's gonna like me later. I got a water tonight. So I'm gonna be in the backyard annoying him. So I watered the front yard uh, a forgot how many days ago it was. But, uh, yeah, I haven't gotten around to watering the back yet. So, I think I should do it tonight. After I feed Scruffy. I was actually thinking about doing it before I fed Scruffy, but I thought maybe that would agitate him even more. But I'm not sure. But, uh, yeah, it's not in water, so I'm going to water it after. <clears throat> so it's a hot day today. It got much hotter than it was supposed to. Still cooler than, uh, few days ago, so it's not that bad, but a little uncomfortable. It's supposed to get cooler tomorrow, and then the rest of the forecast, it jumps up quite a bit. Although I think those days are going to be what today ended up being. So, kind of on that. A little hot, but still like on that cusp of uh, tolerable and miserable. And though I think we'll be a little closer to the tolerable side. The last heat waves we've had were on the more miserable side. Uh, <clears throat> I was actually feeling kind of tired today, so I actually stayed in. So that's another reason I was thinking I should water today. So I think I was talking about my shoelaces uh, so yesterday. So I've been. So yeah, well, my pair of running shoes, the shoelaces broke, and uh, it's never happened to me before. And I think yeah, the design, either the shoelaces or the shoe or both, are def kind of a design defect. So I mentioned that the, the shoelaces themselves, they were kind of made of two parts. They have kind of a inner cord and an outer sheath. Both of them work together to create the strength of uh, uh, the shoelace, and the cord by itself is not that strong, so it really needs both the sheath and the cord to kind of keep the structural integrity. <clears throat> anyway, the sheath broke, so um, it was just the cord that was left. And it happened on both, pair, uh, you know, both sides of the shoe. 
So, um, or, yeah, both, you know, both pairs of shoes, or, it's, it's terminology is confusing. The, um, anyway, the shoelaces, uh, I think the little eye hole, uh, the eyelets for the, from the shoe may have helped cut or rip the sheath. So that's why I think it could be a design defect in both the shoelace and the shoe kind of working together. And the fact that it happened on both pairs of shoes, it, you know, it makes me think, yeah, it's not just an isolated thing because, you know, two different, uh, happened in two different shoes. One for each foot. And then actually the, on one of the shoes, yeah, both, both sides of the string were shoelace were also uh, getting uh, their uh, the sheath ripped. So yeah, I, I think it's a bad design. So anyway, originally I tried uh, you know, just duct taping the thing back together, uh, but it created a problem for me because it broke right where the eyelet. The last eyelet, uh, the, the lace comes out of the, the final eyelet near the ankle. And so in order to wrap duct tape around it, um, I had to tighten the lace. And so the shoe was really, really tight. So I had to tighten, tighten the shoe so I could get more of the lace through. And uh, it was actually causing me blisters. So... <clears throat> So I finally decided that I was going to do something more proper, and I um, got some old shoes that still have working shoelaces, mostly, and uh, decided, okay, I'm going to just swap those shoelaces. Fortunately, the old shoelaces I have, the, the little, the, the end point, which is usually wrapped in like a little, or encased in like a hard plastic so you can get it through the eyelets. Yeah, that plastic's long gone, so it's actually really hard to get it through the holes, but I managed. I managed. Uh, but the other thing I was looking up was uh, different ways to tie your shoelaces. So the other thing I've been kind of struggling with uh, is I think I need a wider shoe um, because the sh the, uh, my last pair of shoes, yeah, the, basically I wore a hole. I wore holes through the the outer uh, the, uh, the the edges of the shoe, uh, where my pinky toes are, and so I think I need a wider shoe. Uh, but I looked it up, and another possible workaround is uh, the way you tie your shoes might make a difference. So they said if you have a wide foot or your feet swell, maybe that's my problem. But um, anyway, the, uh, if you tie your shoes a different way, it may uh, alleviate some of the stress on uh, the shoe. So I found a technique, somebody called parallel laces, where instead of crisscrossing um, the laces through every eyelet hole, um, you, it's, it's kind of a strange pattern where you go straight across and then go down, you skip a hole, so instead of crossing back over, you go straight down, but you actually skip a hole and then come from under and then go over and then cross back to the other side, and you end up getting kind of this weird, uh, well, it's not weird, but you get uh, this very straight parallel lace pattern. And um, they claim it uh, may help take off some of the pressure off the, you know, I guess the, the edges of your shoe if your foot's too wide or swollen up. So I tried that the, uh, with I had a pair of shoes uh, two days ago, and so far so good. So today I spent some time uh, 
relacing uh, another pair of running shoes that I have. Say, so I try to alternate them. I can't get feed scruffy. Let's get the food. They almost dodged me there. Let's push him into it. Okay, I'm So, can't remember what happened at lunch. I think it was a pretty normal lunch. I think I do remember at the end, Scruffy left a few pieces of kibble in the bowl, so I fished them out and left them on the red plate, and then after I was inside, he came back for them. Hey, Scruffy. You moved. You were in the... near the chair a few minutes ago. <clears throat> so I forgot my camera. So we have to go find it. So I got your lunch. Actually, eh. About halfway through. I've been pretty consistent about this time. So I don't know what the weather's going to do today. <clears throat> I think it's going to be like yesterday. Send a meow. It means meow. A little quiet today. It's not that hot yet. Seems to like the headbutt. Head pad, at least. Well, it's a little louder. Oops, got a cough. I think they just woke you up, huh? I don't think you like lunches. I think you'd rather sleep. <clears throat> but it's so hard to pass up free food, huh? The other thing we
Tonight's dinner is meaty pate, super supper, meow mix, kibble, and rotisserie chicken scraps. So this is a fresh can. Let's go through it fast. It's a little bit under the golf ball. I'm actually getting a little bit on the low side of the meow mix and with the container I have inside. So I'll probably be opening up that Kirkland bag soon. And kind of per tradition of watering, I usually leave Scruffy some extra kibble after I'm done. So he's going to get more meow mix when I'm done. Most likely. Scruffy, I should clean the bowl tonight. Didn't expect that. Okay, folks. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye. Okay. I got some kibble for you. So we didn't actually finish watering. I got about two thirds done, but lost the sun. I can't see anything anymore. Scruffy's been sitting here in the dark. So, I'll have to walk, finish watering another day. And, you know, you're really hissy tonight. Okay, I'm gonna give you some kibble. Sit down.
Okay. Seems more scruffy. 